Shiron, Yeli Faith, Resol the Mot. Lord, you are everything, everything and everything. My yard is Sion, Yehova, Yehova, Yehova. You are fair, but fair, the very little grows. By the wayside, you are brave. You are precious, Lord, most precious. You are the rose of Shiloh, the rose of Shiloh. Yeah, the fairest soul, the more. Lord, you are everything, everything, Lord. Then my heart is higher. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. You are fair, my fair, than the lily that grows by the wayside. You are praise, most precious, then God. Oh, you are, you are, you are the rose of Jehovah. The rose of Shiro, the faith, the soul, the mother. Hey, you are everything, everything, Lord. Then my heart is I am. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Yeah, 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 Oh, you are, you are, you are the rose of Shiron, the rose of Shiron. You are the fairest of the most. Hey, you are everything, everything, Lord. Then my heart is I are. You are, you are. Grows by the wayside, you are precious, hey, most precious. Yeah. Oh, you are, you are, you are the rose of Shiron, the rose of Shiron, the fairest of them all. You are everything, Lord. You are everything, Father. Then my heart is higher. You are fair, fair, fair. That grows by the wayside. You are precious, Lord, most precious. There, oh, can we clap our hands and we thank the Lord, Father? We come before you as so we are. Father, we come and kneel down before your holy throne. Spirit of my Father, take over. Take over this service of today. Lord, we want to hear you. We want to hear you as we speak with us. We want to hear you as you direct us. We want to hear you as we walk before us. Father, we don't want to follow anybody, but we want to follow you. You said to Andrew and the other disciple, follow me. For you shall see. We want to follow you and we want to see your glory. We want to follow you and we want to see your power. We want to follow you and we want to see your greatness. Lord, we want to follow you. We want to see your anointing. Working in our lives and breaking grounds and breaking barriers. Lord, we don't want to leave this house being the same. Father, we want to have a change in perspective, a change in thoughts, a change in our mind, a change in what we do. Father, everything that we want to do, we want to do it for the glory of the kingdom of heaven. There is nothing else we are seeking for. We just need your power to energize us. 
We just need your power to fill us. We just need your power to make us to be able to stand in these times that we are living in. Father, we will never get tired because I know who saved me. We know who saved us. We have been saved by the blood, washed clean by the blood. We have been made who we are, not because we were favorable, not because we were doing good, but because you loved us. You said at the cross of Calvary, it is finished. And as I look today, Heavenly Father, it is finished. That is why we are standing. There is nothing more we have to do. Nothing less we have to do. What we have to do, we have to follow your word each and every day. Doing what you want. Nothing less and nothing more. Your word is the path. Your word directs us. Your word give us victory. Your word make us to stand. Your word make us to be who we are. Your word, Heavenly Father, shapes us, Lord, and make us what you want us to be. I love to give you the praise. I love to give you the glory. I love to worship your name. I love to glorify your name. I love to give you the praise. I love to give you the praise, your majesty. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy are thou God Almighty. We lift our hands today as we worship your mighty name. Let your name be glorified. Your majesty, King of glory. The I am that I am. The Lord God who was. The Lord who is. The Lord who is yet to come. The soon coming King. The reigning King. The Lord who is always with us. Always walking with us. Leading us each and every step of the way. Walking with us wherever we go. That is why when we do what we do. We do it for the glory of the kingdom. Not that people must recognize us. Not that people must speak about us. We want them to speak about the kingdom. We want them to speak about your glory. We want them to speak about your power. For we have seen your power. For we have seen your glory. Come around. Come around. Come around. Now we have Shakara Yuta. Come around. 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 Papandi toma kota, papandi toma luva, papandi toma unisa. E atingali chi, yande la kamaji ati yande, riete kemeri ashi choro yande. Maati le kesi atara baya, zitendo kamo, zindu mo kamo, mi humo kamo ne, mo fanero, mo fanero, mo fanero, mo fanero, mo fanero na uyarishaka yuta. Mofanero Motsimuare Hone, Kababonare, 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 and a Musi, Kababonare, Kabachibine Chibine Mukatiasho, Kabaitem Shuba, one of Atena Hone, Bapadias with Tima, one of Mamia Muketra, and a Cochibina Chibina Mukatiasho, we have kept away. It is an Arumero Zone, Nero Fratipiro Recotter. Ori ni ni chipele chipele bukati hashu. Ori ni ni ita zone zone na rumero zita. Rinda rido zura richeni renda. Rarenda kuti ashwa tatoro. Rarenda muru ne abo. Rarenda chini tichavo. I want to give you the praise. I want to give you the glory. I want to worship your mighty name. Gracious Father, Lord God Almighty. The I am that I am. Oh, ya kana kala sutoro shike ma. Mandi te keria seto koshike. Koko rio soti ni kamando lo shima. Give us the grace, Lord. Give us the power. Mandi lo koria tolo shika ma ende. Rie teleke anda la kasi ya tarabaya anda. Kikando lo lo shite de keke 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 kario. Ima mama ma ando lo lo shite te te te. Rie re 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 shita ta 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 ta. I give you the praise, Jesus. I give you the praise, Jesus. I give you the praise, Jesus. Your majesty. I will hold on. 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 
until you come. I will hold on, Jesus. And the Lord should take a kiss yet to the bayah. He comes to the kiss yet to the man. Oh, you're a sit up. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, okay, yes. Baruka Yesu Baruka Yesu Baruka Matsimwa Chirao Baruka Matsimwa Rehore Baruka Alfa na Omega Baruka Morangi na Mukunyerezi Matomo na Maferero Matsimwa no Tsurao I will give you the praise I love you, Jesus. 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 I love you, King of Glory. I love you, your master, master of everything. You are awesome in this place, Lord. Are we as one angry win? 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 Ah, oh, I don't have one yes. Ah, I don't have one now. We are Shakara Yuda. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, I don't have one. Hey, 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 Mwa baleri wa machiroch, mutsi mware wone, morangi na mukunyeret, matomo na maferelo, kabarendiwe, 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 kabarendwe, kabarendwe na wiyarusha kwa yun, lion of the tribe. Father, we are sick, healers. Father, we've been discouraged, mend us, encourage us again. Father, oh, we have pains, Lord, we don't understand. Make us to understand. Papa Tite, Mandile Shite, Rakatindela Mandi and the Lessitaraya, Riete de Lebe Shikaye. Ah, ah, eh, eh, eh. Lutandolunga, 
Yevo Lutando 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 Lutando, 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 No, I'm not seeing you, Sai. Evo, Evo, Sai, 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 Evo, 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 Ah, I will lutando lona, I will lutando lona, I will lutando I will not I will Oh, God, it is super dirty. I see this. I do it. Sigh, sigh, sigh. Eh, 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 I I I I I I
dance like you know the Lord? Can you dance? Sai, 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 sai. Eh, 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 sai, sai. Eh, ya buwa mweke me marasagane from Pretoria. I am from Pretoria. Kama, kama dulo. I'm saying there. Eh, na kitu kwa tole mwaka mudimu. I want to thank the Lord because of the great thing he has done in me. I was attacked in 2017. There were times that the attack would come and times that the attack would go. It took me three good years. Until March, when the lockdown began, when churches were closed, I was in the one on one session before closed down. After one on one, after the session of one on one, those pains I used to feel I couldn't feel them anymore the dizziness I always felt disappeared also until the second week uh, we were allowed to come to church so Didi was praying for us and she said to me mama you are free I'm free I'm telling you the truth, I am free. Because, because uh, those months from April until October, always I will feel like when I'm walking, I will fall and I will never rise or walk again. I wouldn't be able to do anything in my house. But today, since but Lehono, uh, since, he, since I started in March until today, there is no dizziness that I'm feeling again. I can do everything and anything in my house. So I would love to thank the Lord because of that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to thank God for blessing us with a car. The name of the car is a Toyota Corolla 1.3 Advanced. Toyota Corolla 1.3 Advanced. 2012 model. 2012 model. Let us clap our hands for the Lord. Amen. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I'm here to thank God for what he has done. God saved me. God was able to take me out of the situation when I was in the hospital. I was going to give birth. And then the child was said he or she has bridged. Then they took me to Sona and they told me about the baby has bridged. So they took me to the operation room. So I thank the Lord because the Lord allowed me to pass that stage and I was taken to Ward 9 where I gave birth. So when I was in Ward 9, they told me that the operation was opening up. And then my stomach started sw becoming swollen. So they called doctors to come and see what was happening. So they said they are going to drain me from the inside. When they took off those stitches, they took me back to the theater. 
they said they are going to clean me. One month, the whole month I was in hospital. They were cleaning and they will close. So I just want to thank the Lord because the Lord has made me to go through that situation and the nurses were taking care of the little one. So I also want to thank God for the pastors in the house. They were able to see that I had a problem. So I love to thank the Lord because I was able to pass through all temptations. I want to thank the Lord. Can we clap our hands for Jesus? Clap your hands and ululate and give glory unto um, Mazalane, My great news is that um, when I came to the church, I was invited by a good friend of mine. And then um, when we came, the first time I came, I remember the, the, the teaching was about thanking God. Yes, and I took that into my spirit. And as we were dancing and dancing, the apostle said, let's dance as if it is done. So when we were going out, he pointed at me and I fell. And for me, it was thank God that whatever it was, it And then uh, Tuesday morning, early hours of the morning, my mom is also Marispec. Oh, Mawa Linko Marispec. Yes, I got a call. In the early hours of the morning, and then it was below two. As they were trying to give her the normal glucose and all but that stuff. But it was not responding, it was still going down. So by the time I'm Lindsay Figa, she uh, was about to be in the coma. And then was Spelela. And then, they revived her. Then, while the doctor was doing the test, my mama is older. Ah, doctor, dear test, mama, And then they discovered she was developing early signs of pneumonia. Yes, and then because of that, doctor, and it's normal these days. Benza, you must test the coronavirus. So you know, because it was you test. Coronavirus. And then she discovered they discovered the coronavirus. Yes, but but Bamsusa get from the normal ward and they took her to the corona ward. My, my testimony of the goodness of God. And while she was in the hospital, she was admitted for six nights. Not once did she cough. Not once did she use the oxygen. When she came out, she was praising God in Psalm 91. If you are in that ward and you survived the disease, she discovered that really and truly the snare of the fowler is broken. Because she said on, on her right, people were falling. On her left, the people were falling. There is a scripture in Psalm 91 that says, a thousand on your side, ten thousand on your right side. And none shall come near your dwelling. That is what she experienced. She said at some time, she even asked herself, Am I really having a corona or there's a wrong Because she was not coughing, she was just sitting there for six days. I thank the grace and I thank the glory because I can tell you that the deliverance was for my mom. And then I want to tell you that the deliverance was for my mom. And then I want to tell you that a miraculous thing happened to my life. And then I want to tell you that a miraculous thing happened to my life. I've had a wound on my leg. This, this wound has been traveling me for 
I've been having a dressing for like almost a year if not a year. le ntshwentse ngwa ka mokanna ke ya ke ke banditswa ke batosa di banditse. But for the first time last week last week I came to the church. Ke tele ke re I was meaning to put my stockings on ne ke nyokwa para le di stocking. Mo ko ya pa ise le ntoyela. By the grace of God as I fake. Ka gawela ka tlokela. I've never had pain. A ke tole ka buthuko. And suddenly the wounds are dried up. Swa no ndi ntshosi tshile di no ma ka botsona. Without pain. Ke sepela ke sna le ka buthuko. They just suddenly came out in July. My, my testimony is since I walked into this house. The first time I walked into this place, when I jumped off of the car, I couldn't walk. I was limping. I came walking, but as soon as I set my foot in this place, my foot started. I felt a terrible pain on my heel. As, as if my heel was breaking. That's when I realized. I said, God, it's time for my deliverance. Such so one I was afraid of. Why don't you want me to step in this house? Why is Satan not going to do that? Because he was afraid that he was going to do that. I give glory to God. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to thank God for blessing us with a car. The name of the car is a Toyota Corolla 1.3 Advance. Toyota Corolla 1.3 Advance. It's a 2012 model. 2012 model. Thank God. Our shepherding Jesu Matso. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I want to thank the God of Charis. The things that He is doing for me are so much great in the Stulu family. God has enabled me to increase my house and make it look good and new. Even God has enabled us to buy a car. Barki Mercedes Vito a gray. So, so I really want to thank the Lord. Amen. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I want to thank God. I came to the service on the second. A week before last week. A week before last week. Topic in really thanking God. Tabaya wana ne rivule la kau le wamudi. And Muruti Apostle Orile, we must always thank God in everything. And the Apostle said, in everything we must thank God. Aba a a mentiona hori, utanzo le vuge mudi mu kama imwa oche a a kuchakela. You must thank the Lord in all the situations that you meet along the way. Whether good or bad. Chedi wuti uva kichedi mpi. The following day, so we went home, but the whole family going to my husband's family. And We got an accident along the way. There's the mirror of the Audi A4 and just bumped us. So I thank the Lord for saving us and protecting us. And another testimony. The same car was due for service. So the following day, there is an appointment for service. So we called it thus to put the appointment. And we took it there on a Wednesday. So my husband just said, let us fill in papers so that we can check what is it that we can do. And we just sat down and said, let's just thank the Lord. Whatever that God will give unto us, we will accept. If it's a car, we will accept it, or we will just drive this one that is ahead, no matter how it is. I want to thank God. It's a car, brand new car. 
I want to thank God mudimuli shufati ka kolo ya mipsa. Audi. Audi. SQ5. SQ5. Quattro. Quattro. Eh. Hey. Akata li ona marite mudi chanso. Ba chabilo i driver but it's in the pictures. Amen. Let us clap our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was an compliant Mike Cabo so that we can pray for the car. Uh -huh. Maybe you will just tell us how you feel. Oh, I believe that one was Madame. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, as we are very happy to receive this gift. Because this gift was said that is coming. And us, we believe in the word. If anything is spoken in this house, we believe it. You cannot change our mind. So we thank God for this gift. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And September. But I don't believe it. Because. Ever since we came to this place, everything uh, we speak, it just happens. And uh, Even those things we are not searching for, they just happen. So, so it took us time for us to get this car, but we just said we want to give up. Because already it was already spoken. We, we are happy that we will never be unable to come to church. We thank the Lord for all the blessings. Amen. We even thank the parents of this house. Amen. Let us clap our hands for Jesus. Maybe you will be amazed when I say, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Daddy, are you seeing them? Do you know them? Okay, let us take our hands to the car. We are going to bless this. We say in the name of Jesus. We bless this car in Jesus' name. We cover it with the blood of Jesus. You shall never stuck along the road. You shall never make an accident with this car. The hand of the Lord is upon you. You are protected by the grace of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can subscribe you move one way in Ashkemushmikatakis. Let us clap our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. You can reverse your car. Mama, you say this brother, you know him. Is Mutlongo that one who stays at Jabu's place? What happened? I don't know. I'm also shocked. Can you see God is faithful? <laughs> okay, what happened to you? I mean, maybe but I shall sell it. Now you've got a, a something. And then there's something going forward. Hey, it's a little sacrilege. Ah. So these are the people that uh, can you see go there was everything was finished. This yeah, I mean this testimony can give you courage, isn't it? My sister, can you remove this thing? I want to see if you are the one or maybe you married the second wife. <laughs> what happened, my brother? <laughs> oh, it's God. It's God. He yes. says it's God. The words he spoke. Maritur Laminga y Pielawon. Yes. When you said it's only the beginning, as we believed. 
Mitei masungulo ya sona inaipume. Uh, you know, if you are in Charis, when you are in Charis, and you know these people, and utiba wanu la kaba, your faith is bound to increase. Aye. Kufela kama ina kufuna kuyaenda. So where are you staying? Semi samale kui. We are still in the house there. We are still. There. We are still in the house there. Where, where we were told to be. La inga bjelo aku isamako. I don't want to talk many things. Can you see? <laughs> Taking people, there's no accommodation, nothing. What, what do you think is happening to us? Taking these people, there's no accommodation. There's nothing. nothing. Uh, you take them, there's no food. There was nothing. Now they are coming with a car. And say we have a testimony. I, how did you buy this car? Tell me. Maybe, maybe Mama gave you the money. Maybe when you came, eh, eh, I didn't. <laughs> Mama didn't give us money, honestly. Uh -huh. Ever since uh, before lockdown, I came to Mama before lockdown, with a problem. I told the problem. them there's someone at work who wants to get me fired. Mama so, prayed for me. So you, you got a job. <laughs> yes. When was that? <laughs> Last year, November. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> okay. So ever since we said and we decided that no matter what, Titha must not skip. That is what is covering me. That is covering our family. We even told mom every month ever since lockdown, tithe. And when we tithe, we speak what we want. We speak what we want to see happening. Amen. And the thing that helped us is that, you know, ever since you told us, you placed us there, we've been there. Because God told us that is where you must be. Amen. And unless you come and you speak, this is where we will be. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Even others that we didn't want, I just saw the stomach growing. No, let's cut this test. It is so much. It's, I'm also shocked. Okay, God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. God, God can shock you. Amen. Hey. You know them? Hey. Are you, are you sure? Okay. Let's ask this one. What is that you know about them? I know them, Daddy. I, I, I saw them even the beginning when they came here, when my brother was telling their story, how much they went through and everything. And all the time when we go to the house where they are staying, where we go to clean the, we always found them. They are staying there at the guest house. Mm. Uh, let's give glory to God. Amen. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> You know, this, this can make someone to fear God. This. No job. She got a job last year. Now she bought a car. The baby is coming. This, that. You can fear God. I, out of my experience, well, let me greet you all in Jesus' name. Since I'm, I'm in Charis here, I, I've seen God doing wonders. To be honest, we normally believe in people who don't have anything that God can give them everything. And this is what is happening. We really thank God. Amen. Uh, and uh, people like this, I, I want to give you an example of them. How many of you can accommodate someone who's having nothing until you have something? How many of you can do that? Because I believe that is life. If truly want to help someone, don't help someone because you are seeing he can go somewhere. Help someone believing God that God can take that person far. I don't know if you're hearing that. Uh, have you, have, you hear what Christina was saying? Another one who said, who knows, who knows that person? Who knows them? Who knows those people? It's only Christina. You know them? You know them? 
So what is it that you are gaining in your faith? I was no longer knowing. And they are staying in my house. Can you see people are staying in my house, but I'm no longer knowing. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Yes. I just know them from here in the church, Daddy. From the first time from when the they came day. here. Yes, when they, they, and, they were telling us were about working. Medic. Yes. Then the lady came again to testify that she got a job. She testified here. Yes, here in the church, and then now they came again. And then Christina, who's, who's working to clean, always find them there, in the guest house of the church, staying there. Mm. Because I say, stay here until God does something. Amen. Can you see? Stay here until God do something, until he does something. And then I wanted to remind my brother that he wanted to go. Yeah. Yes. I, he wanted to go. Because you know when you are seeing tough times, this, nothing is happening. He said, no, let me go. I know, nothing. But now you can see God is faithful. Amen. Amen. I mean, to me, I'm learning that we need to trust God as he is. Without anything, he will do something. Amen. Amen. Let's leave that. So who believe is going to testify next week out of their testimony? Let me hear three people, Mama, again. Mama, Mama, let me hear three people here. I want to hear their testimonies before. Before. Let me hear let me hear. I'm going to testify the healing of my little sister because she tested positive of HIV uh, during the week and she can't walk anymore. Where is she? She's at my grandmother's house in Harangua. Okay, let's, it will happen. Amen. It will happen. You believe. Let me hear another one. I'm seeing a hand there. Let's go by those who are lifting up hands. Good things again. My testimony for next week will be the deliverance of my sons. My younger one, I caught him that he's stealing money from my bank account. So you know, I you know this mama, God. when she was giving a testimony here, I just said, God will use foolish things. Amen. Because, you know, it's when the church was out, and I was going out today. I'm sure you remember, mama. Yes, yes. You were with other people. Yes, I was with my friend. Where? This Where's one. It? All right, let's ask the friend. Can you stand up, my sister? So when you saw me pointing at Mama, what were you thinking? Because you were looking at me like, where is this guy come from? You know, you pointed at her and she started, and I thought, Haibo. You, you say Haibo? Yeah, because I thought, what is she doing? Because she was going and she was almost falling. Was it the first time you were coming to church? Yeah, it was the second. I came first, and then the next week I came with her. The following week I came with her. And then meeting you there, you were going out, and I was going Yes, there. yes. And then, so you were asking why I'm not pointing at you. Uh, I always tell her that, now nah, I never fall. Why are you guys always falling? What is happening? You, you ask her, why are you not? Uh, because I was asking, why nothing is happening to you? <laughs> Is that you want to fall also like other people who are always falling? <laughs> Can you hear that? So, but now when Mama is giving a testimony, what are you saying? I, I glorify God. You glorify God. Because I believe it's going to happen. So you knew Mama, she's not falling because of demons? I wasn't sure. Lolo. too. <laughs> no clap hands for this mama. <laughs> this yeah, because, you know, I can remember very well when I pointed at mama, I could read her mind that she's thinking, ah, can't and mina, when's the guy in? And all things like that. The devil is using people to fight against me. And you confirmed what I was thinking, but negative show. But I, I, I said thank God because you actually confirmed it. Oh, I also told you something. Yes. There. But the church was out. Yes, the church was out. Okay, okay. God bless you. 
Amen. Arez. So today we need to carry on with the word of God. Let's uh, need to carry on. I want us to hear, it's like we are starting differently. Let's read uh, Luke 17. Luke, the book of Luke. Uh, God is faithful. When we are teaching the word, just hold on, it will change your life. The word of God is powerful. Amen. Amen. Uh, Luke 17, verse 26. We can read, just write 26 to 37 is fine, where you can go and read at home. Yes. I'm reading now. And as it was in the days of noon, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day the, that new entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. 28, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his staff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lord's wife, whosoever shall say, seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. And I tell you, in that day, you know, I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together and the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. Another one shall be taken and the other left. And they answer and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, whither will the eagles, eagles be gathered together? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when I'm reading this, I'm beginning to ask myself, how am I going to interpret this to the message I'm going to preach today? And uh, today... I want you to be very, very careful of what we are going to talk about. A sin of disobedience. Just write sin of disobedience. A sin of disobedience. The first thing that we can see when we are reading there, you could see that the Bible shows that uh, they had the message by the time of Noah and they disdain the message. In other words, they treated that message unworthy. They treated the message unworthy. There was a lot of disobedience. And then if we talk about disdain, it means unworthy for consideration. They heard the message enough and the Bible says as it was like that day, it will be the same by the time of Christ. There will be a lot of disobedience. 
And if you read verse 30, 30 there, which I want to uh, explain, verse 30, it says, even thus shall be in the day where the man of God is revealed. You can see there, verse 30. It shows that it will be the same that people will love to disobey, not to obey, to hear, and to follow. By the time of Noah, you could see Noah says, please come to the ark. There's going to be waters all over the world. The rain is coming. God wants to destroy the whole world. They disobey. And now on verse 30, it's the same thing that by the time of Lot, you know, Lot was talking about God is about to do this. They didn't listen to that. Until the time when Lot was taken out with his family, still, they wanted to take the girls and they were disobeying. Amen. So, in verse 32, which is very, very important, which is like our message today, it says, uh, remember Lord's wife. Despise that the whole family was taken out. The wife of Lord still disobey. The message was, do not look back. But because there were things she loved where she come from, the Bible says she looked back and she was destroyed. So this was the message that our Lord Jesus was, come, was speaking and says, uh, remember Lord's wife because in verse 33, she tried to save a life. Whoever tried to save her own life will lose it and will try to lose his life for himself will find it. So in other words, the refuge of your life on the day of salvation will be of yourself fighting to obey than to disobey. Without getting anything, the refuge of your life for yourself, it will be for yourself try to fight to obey, not to disobey. If you try to save your life by disobedience, because disobedience is there for people to save their lives. There are two things that they're afraid. is fear and doubt. Because whatever that comes to their lives, it brings fear and doubt. So they don't want that. So here, you don't need to save your life. You just need to what? To obey. So, it will be the devotion of God in your life on that day. Not looking on other things. In other words, devotion of, of God in your life or with your life or devoting yourself to God by your life or with your life is the one that will save your life by the day when God visits you. It won't be the things of the world. The things of the world will come to tempt you. The properties and all those other things of the world that you love most will be coming to check your life. And if you love them, you can lose your life. That's what we are reading today. Here the Bible says in verse 34 and 35, it says, I tell you in that night there shall be two men. You can hear that. I tell you that there will be two men and then one in bed and one shall be taken and another will be left. What is the meaning of that? Which I want to explain. The meaning is on that day your devotion cannot help another. Your devotion with God cannot help another. There is nobody who's going to be helped by someone's obedience. So if you can be robbed by somebody's disobedience, you are still robbing your life. So the decision of you to be taken away, it will be coming from your obedience. So the last day of that judgment 
will determine you whether you were disobeying or obeying you. So, sin of, the, of disobedience is very dangerous because it makes you to be rejected by God. It makes you to be rejected by God because on that day is then we will know you if you were disobeying God or obeying God. So that is where the Bible says two will be sleeping together. Two will be grinding together as if they are in one thing. But it's only disobedience and obedience that will be shown you were disobeying. That's why you're left. You were obeying. That's why you're left. Amen. That's why you're going. Yes. I want to read this one. And verse 36. Two men shall be in the field and the one shall be taken and the one left. In other words, we don't know when people are working together also. Everybody will be arranged or another one will be taken or another one will be moving to a place because of what he has been doing. Obeying or disobeying. 37. And the disciple asked Jesus, Where, Lord? And Jesus said, Wheresoever the body is, tita, with the eagles be gathered together. What Jesus was saying here was, this disobedience will be found everywhere. So these things will be happening everywhere. So the judgment is coming against the sin of disobedience. So we need to be very careful that we are not influenced by the people we are staying with, by the people we work with, or by the people we are doing things with. Because it's only disobedience and obedience that will take, that will determine us in our last day. So this sin of disobedience can make us to be left behind. When I was reading this, I began to think about Luke 5. Luke 5, from verse 1. From verse 1, where we see Peter, who was already finishing his job. And our Lord Jesus came and asked him. And the moment when our Lord asked him and say, please, the Bible said he prayed to ask to use his boat and he agreed. And after he finished preaching, he says, can you, can you lower your net for a catch? You know, I was reading this, I was really shocked. I just want us to go there because these are the scriptures that we know in Luke 5. I want to show you three to four things that Peter was asked to do. Luke 5 from verse 1. Can you just read verse 1, Mama? It says, Now it happened that while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesareth, Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around him and listening to the word of God, that he saw two bows lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little distance from the shore. And he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signaled 
to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus, at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all his companions were complete, completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter, Jesus said to Simon, Have no fear. From now on, you will be catching men. I want to explain in detail so that you listen very carefully because I'll be very slow. The first thing is verse 2. The Bible says they were washing their nets and they were not close to the boat. They were washing their nets. But it shows that Jesus called Peter. Jesus uh, might have called Peter somewhere or another, somehow or another. I will tell you why. Because if he entered the boat and there were many people, he might have said, I want to use this boat. Who's the owner? People around might have called Peter. Peter, who was washing the nets, and he came. All right. The first thing that our Lord Jesus did here, you could see it on verse 3. He says, the Bible says, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and he prayed him that he will thrust out a little from the land. In other words, Jesus here begged Peter. He asked him. He asked Peter. Peter had, um, he could just disobey. He could just deny it. He might have denied and say, I don't want to do what you are saying. I'm using this boat to catch fishes and I didn't catch anything. Amen. And the Bible says, verse 4. I want to show you verse 4. And the Bible says, after he finished speaking, that's the second thing. He says, launch out into the deep and let, your, let down your nets for a draught. That is the second thing that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke with Peter. Hear Peter had a reason to deny because he knows that the whole night they were working to catch those fishes you know according to how you catch the fish in the night they come close to the seashore and then now during the day they go in the center because of the sun so now you could see that on the boat here Jesus says can you lower your net it means they never moved anywhere they have to lower a net here so Peter had, here you could just see that the answer of Peter was meaning something on verse 5. He answered and said, just, I'm reading verse 5, Master, can you hear that? The first thing that shows that Peter was already seeing something in Jesus. He said, Master, we have toiled the whole night and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let it down. Okay? I will tell you why he said master here. According to his understanding, he had a view by himself of understanding how he can range Jesus. Already he might have seen, because Jesus here was not yet publicly known. Remember that Jesus was presented to others by the disciples. But now, it's when people are around, when he want to use, he could feel there is something here with this man, but he was not believing in him. He was not believing in him. To show that he was not believing in him, the Bible says, he said, I'm doing that because of your word. I'm not doing it because of what I know. Out of my expertise, we know that this is not the time to catch fishes. Listen to this. Many times your disobedience is found in what you think you know. Your disobedience is found well. Because whatever you think you know, you don't do it with carefulness. You don't do it with checking. 
Let me call it that way. Many people, they will be found that they were wrong on things they thought they know. Same applies to you are reading scriptures and you find that still God can still found that you were disobeying. You will pray, you find that you have found that your disobedience is there. Your disobedience is found clearly because you know how to manipulate and to reach where you want to reach. You know how to manipulate. The Bible, when you read it, you, you can also read it with disobedience because you know how to manipulate. You just read it and say, okay, yeah, I know the Bible. But you find that you are also disobeying God. If truly Peter called Jesus master, it was of hypocrisy. It was outside, but inside he was not believing. How many people today outside they are Christians, but inside they are not? There's a lot of disobedience. That is the reason why when he catches all these fishes, the Bible says he kneeled down, he fell, and he said, go away, I'm a sinner. Because he was not expecting that. He knew that if something goes wrong, he won't be blamed. He said, I'm doing that because of your word. He knew very well that if he failed to catch those fishes, it will be Jesus who will be blamed, not him. Master, I think this time you are wrong. This time, you won't do it this time. And then I'm just obeying you because you are saying that, but in, deep down in me, I don't believe you. But when it happens, he was forced to kneel down and portray and say, truly, I'm, very, I'm a sinful man. Amen. And look at this. That will really surprise you. When I was reading this, I realized that truly God loves us because the moment we acknowledge our disobedience, we found ourselves. The moment we acknowledge our disobedience, we found ourselves, we get ourselves to the right track. That is what the Bible says. Jesus said, now I'm giving you assignment. Because you have done that, don't be afraid. You have acknowledged your failures. You have acknowledged your disobedience. Now, this is your assignment. Your assignment is you will catch people. We cannot reach a level of our assignment from above with disobedience. If we are still defending ourselves, we will never reach a level where God will call us to our identity from above. We have an identity from above. And that identity needs us to acknowledge our disobedience. Our disobedience. I was disobeying. I'm a sinful man. Sorry. I didn't know that you can do all this. And now, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You disobeyed. Now you are confessing. Now, know that if you confess that way, listen to this. Now you found yourself. Your job is to win many to come to the kingdom. Amen. Ask your neighbor and say, how do you do things which you know the best? How do you do things which you know the best? Because that's where many disobedience are found. Many disobedience are found on what you do, which you know you do it the best. Because you know how to manipulate it. I, not long I found that there's too much disobedience in prayer. Whereby you, you'll be just saying, Rabashikata, and you don't know what you're saying. Have you ever found that you're praying prayer in tongues and you don't know what you're saying? And you are just trying to lengthen the time. You are lengthening the time. Because, can I tell you this? You pray better when you understand what you're praying. But think about when you want to show that you can pray seven hours. I was showing my mom one man who was uh, 
praying. He wanted to speak something, but he started by prayer. And I said, this man, but the tongues that he was speaking was very deep. You know, there are some people who speak very deep tongues to convince you to speak, to, to, to agree to their disobedience. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you so that you understand what I mean. And he was just saying, Lord, second, throw broke out. And then you could just hear that some things, they are just following to one on top of another. From there, he gave another man a warning. You see what? This will happen to you. And the issue was, who sent him? Already it was disobedient. But to make someone to understand that God sent him, he have to bring a lie. You have to conceive a lie and also produce that disobedient. No one sent him. Amen. Look at this scripture when we are carrying on reading. If we read 1 John 3, verse 8, First John 3, verse 8, it says what? The one who practices sin, uh -huh. separating himself from God and offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference, or rebellion, is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral value from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. You declare yourself to be a devil by having acts of disobedience. You declare yourself. In other words, Satan cannot have anything to do with you when you are living a righteous life. You declare yourself. Here, the Bible is telling us that there is no compromising. Because many times, you know, we love to compromise and we want to be understood. We want other people to understand us. Not knowing that we are declaring ourselves the enemies of God. Satan was, he, he, from the beginning he decided to do that. And we get the nature of him. No, it's not the nature of God. Of separating ourselves from God. We declare ourselves that way. If we want us to be the enemies of God. When I was reading this verse, I realized that uh, it talks about offending God also. Offending God. If truly sin of disobedience makes us to offend God. It means we become enemy of God. No wonder why there will be the hell in the last day. Because here, it's clear that we become enemy of God. We decided by a sin of disobedience. In other words, you've got opportunity and right to decide where you're standing and what to do. No one can tell you what. So we decide ourselves to be the enemy of God and to be devils or declare ourselves to be sons of Satan by disobeying God. So we must be very careful that a sin of dis disobedience is not a small sin. It's a sin that makes us to be God's enemy and it's very dangerous. Amen. So we must be very careful about that. I want us to read this verse. Uh, Matthew 21, Matthew 21, 27 to 32. I will show you some verses when I'm coming to this point. Uh, Matthew 21, Mama, just read 27 to 32.
So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what kind of authority I do these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he regretted it and changed his mind and went. Then the man came to the second son and said the same thing. And he replied, I will say. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? The chief priests and elders replied, The first one, Jesus said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you that the tax collectors and the prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you walking in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did believe him. And you seeing this did not even change your mind afterward and believe him. Here you could hear the people who were saying yes to God all the time. When God sent, you know, John the Baptist preaching the word of God with fasting, not eating better food, they still question him. Now here, they were questioning Jesus now. They could not believe. They questioned Jesus. Jesus with what authority are you doing these things? And Jesus says, ah, can you see? John came, he was not doing what I'm doing. You never believe him. You carry on with your disobedience. Now I'm doing these things. You say, with what authority? Let me try to tell you what Jesus did here. He wanted them to answer themselves. He said, if someone say no and later he regretted no to his I mean agreement on what he's supposed to agree he later he realized no no I was not supposed to agree on that no I have to change and that person has done the will of God what Jesus was saying here was you people you say yes and you don't make review, you don't review but a person who review his disobedience, it is the one that will be able to do God's will. You are able to review, you check, check why you disobey, you'll be able to obey. Check why. You cannot just, someone will come, that man is not a man of God. That one is not a man of God. That one is not a man of God. So the question is, who is the man of God? Because these Pharisees were supposed to have believed, but they scrutinize everyone. Amen. I don't know if you're hearing me. Because when I'm, when I'm talking here, I could see that most of the time when God speaks with us, we say yes. When he speaks, we say yes, but we don't do. We disobey. And the issue is why we don't review our disobedience. That's where we'll obey. That's where we'll understand, oh, what makes me to disobey is this. What makes me to disobey was because John was not born in Jerusalem. Okay, what makes you disobey was because even Jesus, we know his parents. And whereas the Bible says, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. So now, if you disobey and you review why you are not disobeying, why you are disobeying, you will understand, oh, your problem is this. And you were supposed to be finding answers on those questions. I'm trying to speak difficult things here in a very simple way. I want you to understand that. If I come to you, I say, listen, you have disobeyed here. And you have chance to review your disobedience. You will be able to obey. But Jesus was concerned about them. They always say yes, but they disobey. They always say yes. 
they, they disobey. Same applies to what is happening in the church. We are preaching. You say amen, but you disobey. And Jesus says, look, the people that we are not even expecting, they are the ones who will come and be saved and you will be left behind. Disobedience is the one that replaces you. It replaces your position. You are expected to have this and you don't get it. Because you cannot review. You are bound to review your belief. Not just to say, yes, I agree. Yes, I agree, but later you disobey. I was reading Luke 6. Luke 6, 49, 46 to 49, where we found that there was issue of pretending. Pretending. Just read that verse again, Mama. Just read that verse again. 46 to 49. You will see what a sin of disobedience does. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and obey them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against the house and yet could not shake it because it had been secured, securely built and founded on the rock. But the one who has merely heard and has not practiced what I say. It's like a foolish man who built a house on the ground without any foundation, and the torrent burst against it, and it immediately collapsed, and the ruin of that house was great. This is a great lesson. Two things there. Knowing Christ requires you to submit. Knowing him commands submission from you. In other words, you cannot be a hypocrite. You cannot be a hypocrite. Knowing him does command submission and ignorance to his teachings shows you are a hypocrite. Number two, sin of disobedience nullify everything you do in the Lord. Look here, the wind blew and what you have done collapsed. If you don't know him, it, I mean, it, it's something else. Now you say you know him, and there is sin of disobedience. So that sin of disobedience nullify everything you are saying you are doing in the Lord. Nullifies. If you are praying, your prayer is zero. If you are fasting, your fasting is zero. Disobedience nullifies whatever you do in the Lord. The wind came and blew. The wind came and blew. When we read this, when we are talking about this, you could understand that you might have been doing many things with disobedience. And what are the results? Where you are stagnated, if you can check around, you will find something that is coming, you confess it, you always confess and reconfess it. And that thing, it might be the one that is stagnating you. So if truly you are able to identify anything that might be stopping your way, nobody will be able to stop you. In Psalm 1, verse 4, Psalm 1, verse 4, if you go and read this message, it's going to help you a lot. Psalm 1, verse 4. Can you read verse 4? The wicked, those who live in disobedience to God's law, yes. are not so, but they are like the chaff, meaning worthless and without substance, which the wind blows away. The, the wind is certain. The wind when the wind blow, 
towards the west, you go there. You are given direction by whatever you face. The ungodly, the disobedience are like chaffs. What is a chaff? You know, a seed, whatever that covers that seed, you know, a seed. Let's take a seed of a maize. You know, there's something that covers that seed. It's called a chaff. Or let's call it a rubbish. A synonym of chaff is rubbish. Worthy to be burned. It doesn't have any substance. It doesn't have weight. When the wind blew to the west, it takes it there. When it blows to the south, it takes it there. And the Bible says, the disobedient are like that. If you want to see that there is disobedience in you, it's when a challenge strikes you. You'll be taken to the direction of that challenge. Whatever that comes like a temptation is coming to take you to look towards where you have been taken there. You have to be taken there. But a Christian won't be shaken. A Christian will remain as a seed because in him there is a seed of God in him. Whatever that happens to a Christian when the wind blew is to take away what is not worth it. What is not right. Pride will go away. How will wrong character will go away. A Christian when he faces challenges you know those challenges from Satan will be there on those Christians to make that Christian to be visible. The chaff will go and the Christian will remain. If you want to know you're a Christian, we will see you well when there's a challenge. But many times we found that many Christians, they complain to show that there are still some chaffs in them. Today, God will take that rubbish. I say chaff is rubbish. I said, God will take away that rubbish. Amen. Can I tell you this? You, you have a seed of God in you. But it's possible that that seed is covered with a chaff. So whatever you are going through is not searching for you. It's searching for a chaff. So don't be intimidated. Allow the chaff to go away and you'll be clear, you'll be visible. If you believe, say amen. amen. So the ungodly, the ungodly will be taken away. I was telling the people of the previous church that Jesus, in the last day, he said, some people will come and say, I prophesy in your name. I deliver people in your name. He says, I don't know you. Why? Because of ungodly and sin of disobedience. Because if they will be taken away, it means they will be taken away from God. They will be taken to reject God. They have been taken to a direction where they cannot worship God. Amen. As Christians, we must check our lives. Because whatever you are going through is searching for you to disobey God. It's searching for you to sin against God. It's searching for you to reject God. And I'm here to tell you that whatever you are going through is not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's because of what you are carrying. It's because of what you are carrying. If you know what you are carrying, you can still rejoice in a shack. I don't know if I can tell you that. You can still rejoice when you have got pains. You can rejoice in the Lord 
when you are facing the shame. But disobedience will come for you to defend yourself. Whoever disobey is trying to defend himself. He's failing to accept who he is and what is coming to qualify him. Can I tell you this? What you're going through is there to qualify you. What God has created in you must be seen by people. If you believe, say amen. In fact, I feel like preaching. I want to teach you, but I feel like preaching. I feel like I can shout and say, God is about to do a new thing in your life, despite what you are going through. Amen. And whatever you are going through cannot intimidate you, because God has allowed it to take the wrong things around you, which were blocking you not to be seen. You are bound to be visible. You are bound to be known. You are bound to be declared as a child of the living God. And whatever you are going through, you know, it's not something that, that can make you to feel like God is no longer existing anymore. It's something to declare you as a son of the living God. The Bible says the creation has been waiting, has been waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And I believe this year, you are going to manifest in the name of Jesus. I say you are going to manifest in the name of Jesus. So sometimes when we, when we go through, we forget that the wicked are like chaff. The wicked are like what? Chaff. So do not disobey, disobey God. Do not disobey God because of what you are going through. You know, there was a time... I will tell you this, but though it, it's no good for you to hear it, there was a time whereby my wife, uh, Eunice, she, she told me something that I didn't understand on that time. And she said to me, um, you know, many people, if they help you, God will never help you. I didn't understand that. If you always search help from people, you defraud God not to help you. I asked her why. She said, please, we must not ask help from anybody. <laughs> by then, I was looking at my children, they were small, and I didn't have food by then. But my wife was telling me that we must not ask so when I was still speaking with her, she said, you know at home where I come from, I have a room where I was born. I said, okay, yes. And he says, if now I ask my parents money for food, they will control me when I'm in your house. I said, what? He says, she says, I won't be what God wants me to be. So God allowed me to be here with you so that I will be what God wants me to be, not what my parents want me to be. That day, I, I was very much disappointed because I didn't understand that because I was looking at my children. I don't know, I don't know if you're hearing me. But not knowing that I'm disobeying God, some blessings are disobedience. Some things that, you know, you go around... You hinder the hand of God. You go around, try to bring it to yourself. You try to bring it to yourself. Not to work with your hands. And you hinder God at work. And you find that you are just looking around because you know your children, maybe they will be crying for food very soon. Can I tell you this? I want to tell you, when you start to find and review your disobedience and you start to understand that your disobedience are not supposed to be your portion and you begin to obey God. God will start to bless you and increase you because this year is a year that many people will be disobeying God and you, you will rise up by obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe, shout hallelujah. From that time, I never ask anything I'm sure even when I come here, 
I've never called someone and said, hello, please, can you give me 20 rand? Can you give me? Even when it was tough, I would just say, this is the will of God. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. And listen, the will of God is fulfilled when you trust him only. That is obedience for you. That is obedience. God wants you to look unto him only. Not with other people. I will show you from the scriptures that we are about to read here. As somebody says, are you sure you are disobeying God or obeying God? Where are you? Huh? I want to show you something. First Corinthians 10 from verse 1. Can you read that verse from verse 1? I want to show you something there. There are five things or four things I want to speak about there. For we, we normally read verse 13, which says, uh, to, we talk about temptation. Yes. First Corinthians 10, 1 to 13. For I do not want you to be unaware believers that our fathers were all under the cloud in which God's presence went before them. Yes. And they all passed miraculously and safely through the Red Sea. And all of them were baptized into Moses, into his safekeeping, and their leader in the cloud and in the sea. And all of them ate the same spiritual food. And all of them drank the same spiritual drink. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them. And the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not well pleased with most of them. For they were scattered along the ground in the wilderness. Because their lack of self control led to disobedience which led to death. Now these things, the warning and the admonition took place as examples for us so that we would not crave evil things as they did. Do not be worshippers of handmade gods as some of them were just as it is written in the scripture. The people sat down to eat and drink after sacrifices to the golden calf at Horeb, and stood up to play indulging in immoral activities. We must not indulge in or tolerate sexual immorality, as some of them did, and 23,000 suddenly fell dead in a single day. We must not tempt the Lord that is test his patience, questioning his purpose on the exploits and on the exploits his goodness, as some of them did. And they were killed by serpents. And do not murmur in unwarranted discontent, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, these things happened to them as an example and warning to us. They were written for our instruction to admonish and equip us upon whom the end of the ages have come. Therefore, let the one who think he stands firm, immune to temptation, being overconfident and self-righteous, take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation nor temptation regardless of its source has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance but God is faithful to his word he is compassionate and trustworthy and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist, but along with the temptation, he has in the past and is now and will 
always provide the way out as well so that you will not be able to en- you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation with joy when we are reading here i could hear that god's privileges they don't they don't determine us if we will make it in the life of obedience god's privileges when god provide things we can still disobey him uh, he can bless us we disobey him he can give us everything so we must never base any blessing with obedience you can find that you can still be blessed you disobey god you can still be poor you disobey god you can still be sick you disobey god you can still be in health you disobey god so you can see in verse 5 it says though they had those privileges but many of them god was not pleased with them what are the privileges number 1 verse 2 you can find the bible says they were baptized unto unto moses in other words they had a divine guidance i was talking about divine guide they are like us god raised fivefold ministries we have got divine guidance here they were baptized under moses you know god raised moses when they've got problem will run to moses amen and then number 2 you could see that the bible, the bible says they passed through the red sea they had a divine deliverance god could still fight for them they had a divine deliverance even today when things start to happen we pray for you there's a deliverance they are not different with us but still god was not happy with them think about when god saved them they passed through red sea but through out of their disobedience they could not reach canaan they died in the desert god was not happy with them number 3 the bible said they were baptized into moses which was like divine leadership but they ate spiritual food they ate they, there was a spiritual meat and water therefore it means they had god intervention there was where the moment when they cry we don't have water god will intervene they don't have meat god will intervene god never allowed them to be de- in the desert and fill their stomach with air they will say now we we are, we are we want meat now we want meat now we want this we want, god will provide but still you know they disobey him and then the bible talks about the rock the rock there it talk about the rock which was christ the source of supply which was Christ. they had a source of supply which was christ and then it goes on to say we are not immune in in verse 12 we are not immune to temptations the moment when we are start to to say we are immune to temptations it means we are saying no temptation can't touch me we start to be overconfident we start to have pride and the bible says we must be careful that we don't fall because the challenges will come we are bound to be tempted to disobey we are bound to be tempted to disobey but we must not uh, worry about temptations because these temptations must come and god will open a space for us temptation, temptation must come our way and god will open doors for us we are not the only ones who are facing temptations one of our challenge is we are you know we don't understand this issue of we are born from different houses if we understand that we will also understand that truly god is having a purpose with us you know the moment when i found that i'm born in my family and then and in my family they are like this i understood that i'm not just born in that family there's a reason behind and i cannot say i'm not supposed to meet what others have met there have to be problems that i have to go through as others have gone through but to me as a christian i must understand that god will open a space for me god have to open a space not for us to fall to disobey god 
Temptation, temptation must come. They must come your way so that you disobey. If you choose to disobey, you are defending yourself. You are trying to find another way of getting a solution. And on the other hand, God will leave you to your power. So what we need to do is we can still see all divine things from God and we still disobey him. Therefore, we cannot wait for God to honor us and we obey him. We cannot wait for God and we obey him. Disobedience, it, it can creep in all the time, everywhere, anywhere. We need to be very careful that we must not declare ourselves that we are better than others. We must never look at ourselves we see that we are better than other people. Obviously, uh, my child won't be like your child. And if you're obviously, I'm not like you. I'm sure you understand that. And obviously, you won't be like another. It's only when you find your way with God and you start to tell yourself, I don't want to disobey God. God will open doors for you. Temptations will come, but the door that God will open will be a door of victory. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ask your neighbor and say, what are you going through? Whatever you are going through is very good for you. Very, very good for you. Very, very good for you. And God might be saving you and you don't know. One man said something, uh, he said that, uh, which is like a saying, that, you know, uh, a living dog is better than a dead lion. But you are a Christian. You are what? A Christian. And there is Christ in you. And the moment when you choose to say, I want to obey him, than to disobey him, I'm telling you, you will be the head, not the tail. God can open a doors where they are closed. I decided to obey God, not to disobey him. And I know there are many things that are coming my way. Many things that are coming my way. You, you can't believe what we are going through, we pastors. You can't believe. They are there just to, dis to make us disobey God. And I, uh, let me try to tell you another thing that I once told my wife. I just went somewhere and then when I reached there, one lady, I don't know if I can call her, she's beautiful or what. I don't know if you could categorize people by beauty or ugly or what. But when I look at her, to me, it was like my child. When I look at that lady, she said to me, oh, I want help from you. I, I was okay. You know me, yes. Yes, okay. One prayer. From prayer, she says, okay, please, can, can I ask your number? Oh, please, okay. I'm facing this. I want to kill myself. Don't kill yourself. Later, she says, can you give me a child? It's everywhere. It's really everywhere. You could see opportunity of doing that. You choose. You decide. I say, Mama, I'm really shocked. I've never seen that. Someone watched me on TV. Later, the person wanted a child. This thing is happening everywhere. You decide. Christians, they come to church, they worship God. You will never know them. They just choose to disobey as long as no one knows. You just decide. You are the one that judges yourself. You've got opportunity to wait. Let's say you want to marry. You've got opportunity to wait until you marry. But you decide. You disobey God. You say, no, me. I cannot wait there. Let's go. Let's meet like a husband and a wife. You, you just disobey God. And the blessings that were coming now, they delay. You delay yourself. It's out of everyone. Anything you do, you do it for yourself. You know, praise God because we have got many of you, you are coming from the world, you know where you come from. Amen. You know where you come from. If you know where you come from, it becomes more better that you understand that though God can still provide, even if it's not providing, but the, 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 the opportunities that you've been given
to take a decision by yourself, you have it 100%. You decide to disobey God, you decide to live in disobedience. Many times when we are in the church today, you are compromising, you are lifting up your hands, but you know what you are doing. As someone says, I don't disobey God. Look at the person's eyes, you will see disobedience. You will see disobedience. Some of you, when God say, wake up and pray, because you have eaten chicken, because you have eaten chicken, you can't pray. But the day you eat muro, you'll be crying, God, why I ate muro? When the blessing comes, they make you to disobey God. When now suffering comes, makes you to cry to God. Here you can see people on the road, think about it. God used his hand to take them from Egypt and bring them to, to the desert. He's taking them to Canaan on the road. They disobey God and they die in the desert. They have not even reached there. Same applies to you here. God took you from the well and bring you to church. You are in the church now. You are complaining. Oh, why my things are not going on? You have not even reached where God is taking you. If I'm you, I will begin to be excited. I will begin to... Because everything works for good. What is good? Where God is taking you? Disobedience must never be your portion. And I'm praying for you today that disobedience will never be your portion. I say you will be a blessing in your family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You go and read it all because I'm giving you the last scripture. Let me give you the last scripture. And that will also help you. First Samuel 15.23 This you can see this scene is very bad of disobedience. Just read mama. First Samuel 15.23 For rebellion is as serious as the sin of divination, meaning fortune telling, and disobedience is as serious as false religion and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you as king. Now you can hear sin of disobedience is a sin of rejecting God. It's just a sin of rejecting. And therefore, you are also telling God, reject me. God, reject me. Yes, Saul, disobey God. And God say, you see, this sin is as good of rejecting his word. And you have rejected God. And God has rejected you. So you could just see that we need to be very careful of what we are doing because we might be living a life under rejection by God. And here you are praying, you are doing everything as you are rejected. Be careful that you won't be rejected. And always, listen, God has been God of replacing. God has been God of replacing. I will tell you something today that you don't know. I will tell you something that you don't know. When God, there are certain people he chooses and then he will never choose another one unless he finish with this one. So, when this one Saul, when he reject God and God decided to say, let me find another one who will replace him. He was there but replaced. A scene of disobedience can make you to be there whereas you are replaced. You find that you are living, you are in the church, but there is someone also there in the church who has really replaced you. My God. That scene is very dangerous. It's there. 
And when it's there, it replaces people. God looks and says, I want to do this, but this one is rejecting me. Let me reject him. Let me raise that one. That's what is happening. God is doing like this. He says, okay, this one, let me put this one aside. It doesn't listen. Let me take that one. You can still be around. And whereas God is no longer with you, we need to be very careful. What I wanted to tell you is, is something that can raise a controversy, which, you, you know, many people won't even understand it. When my spiritual father died, before he died, he said something. We were in the meeting. He used to teach us as pastors. We were in that meeting. He said, Charis is going to cross the border. I was sitting there. And that day, I want to tell you, it was a very day, bad day for me. Because I was wearing a suit. I don't forget that day. The suit that I was wearing, you know, because we were going to the pastor meeting. He was, he was teaching us I didn't have a suit. And the suit that I was wearing was the suit that I was given by a member. And that member, you know, we are different. Him here, he was having a big waist here. And me here, you know, I've got thin waist. And I'm sure it was 36 here. And by then, you know, I was always in my fasting, I was wearing 32. <laughs> so, I was wearing a green suit. I was sitting there. You know, we were in Venda in a hotel. And then I was feeling very hot. I could hear the water dropping, dropping, dropping. But I had a fear of taking off my jacket. Others were taking off their jacket, they are putting it on a chair. And me, I thought, if I took it a jacket, these people are sitting here, they will see that I have bobbed the trouser like this. And then another side, of this I was very worried that day. And uh, and it's a true story. I was tolerating it, and you know, weather is very hot. And I was feeling hot. I said, "Oh God, when is this meeting coming to an end?" So when he was busy talking, talking, I just said, "Lord, allow him to carry on talking, carry on." But I was sweaty. And the others were, these people were like now started to insult me now. Because they were doing like this. And me, I'm wearing a jacket until another one kneeled towards me and say, Are you not feeling hot? I says, Ah, <laughs> I feel fresh air. You must know I come from Johannesburg. I come from Johannesburg. <laughs> so I began to concentrate when he was preaching and later he said, there's a vision that God gave me. And then now when, when a man of God says vision, we all have to listen. And he says, God said, Charis will cross the border. I heard a voice now in my ear. He says, it is going to happen in your time. I thought, Everybody heard that. So I was looking around. Others, they are still gossiping to each other. And I, was, I said, hey. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That day, I began to hear this, that when he become late, when he pass on, I began to see myself traveling what he was doing. There's nobody who has ever done that. It's me who have been doing everywhere, traveling everywhere, everywhere. And I knew that God told me about it, that because I've taken the, that one, you are the one to take over. So whether you like it or not, whether what? Whether God won't raise another until God takes me away. So, listen to this. There are some people like that. 
God will never raise another. He can raise the difference. But he won't raise the same kind until. Until. So, by the time when you hear Macarena is dead, you'll find that God has raised another one. So, same applies here. What can make me to be taken is disobedience. That is why I can sit down here and allow everybody to preach if God has lifted him up. Because nobody will take my position. There is no one who can... If God tests me and say, I'm raising this one, I'll be excited. Because I understand that this position has to be taken by someone one day. And there has to be another person who has to take it. Whether you like it or not. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. Don't be replaced. In this group, we are going to pray that prayer. Lift up your hands and ask God today any source of disobedience. Expose it to me so that I confess it. Prayer. Prayer. Pray that prayer, please. Pray. Any source of disobedience in my life, expose it so that I confess it. Expose it so that I confess it. Father, expose it so that I confess it. I'm a sinner. Expose my disobedience so that I confess it out. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Expose it. Oh God. So that I confess it. If you know confess it, allow God to help you when you are confessing it. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we who are pastors, disobedience can send us to hell because if I'm coming to pray for this one I just want to give you an example if I'm coming to pray for this one to receive a car whereas it's supposed to be this one you can hear, you can see pastoring is not easy. If I'm coming to pray for this one to receive a car where she's supposed to receive a house, is it not disobedience? Disobedience can make someone to manipulate God's work. Lift up your hands. You want to hear God's voice, Holy Spirit. Ask God to guide you to hear him prayer. So that you must not you must not manipulate. Father, I want to hear you speaking. So that I must not manipulate your works. I want to hear you talking, Father, so that I must not manipulate
Carry on praying. I can hear those other ones who are praying on the other side. Oh, Jesus. Father, I'm very sorry before you. I want to hear you. Because I can bless the one who's supposed not to be blessed. If I don't hear you, Holy Spirit, speak with me. Because I can go where I'm not supposed to go. Holy Spirit, speak with me. Because I can fight the one I'm not supposed to fight. Holy Spirit, help me. Oh, I can marry the one I was not supposed to marry. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you know when I'm talking about Mary, oh my God, disobedience can make you to take wrong decisions especially if you are using your eyes can you from today ask God's advice ask God's direction because sometimes the disappointment somewhere might be telling you that there is an appointment somewhere you can still complain and fight to get what is not worthy of you. Lift up your hands and begin to thank God for God's provision about your life, God's direction about your life. Thank God. Carry on thanking him, clapping your hands as you are doing that. Thank you, God. Oh, my Father. Oh, my Father. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Carry on praying. Some of you need direction from God. Carry on. Some of you, you don't know what to do. Your mind, Sing, mom, mama. I feel my heart is very, very heavy. Because 
Disobedience. Disobedience. Disobedience is a very serious issue before God. It might be telling us that we can't hear from God. I was giving you an example that I'm supposed to give this one, this Bible. But I give it to this one. It's not disobedience. It's not disobedience. How many people you are supposed to give them things, you give the wrong ones? Sometimes we use our naked eyes without hearing from God. I'm supposed to pray for someone. I don't pray. I'm praying for another one. I'm supposed to marry this one. I marry this one because of what? Certain things. Disobedience. Disobedience tells you that you are in flesh than in spirit. That is why today you judge each other by what you have. This shows that you are in flesh. This, this disobedience is very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Today, I believe God is going to help us that before we insert this one, we'll insert ourselves. Before we correct this one, we'll correct ourselves. God is going to help us from today to take away this disobedience that when God says, wake up and pray, you do it exactly where God wants you to do it and how he wants you to do it. God say, take this, give it to that one. He say, ah, if I give it to that one, what will happen? Disobedience is everywhere. It is possible that as we have prayed today, it is possible that God will start to guide us and let's do what he says in Jesus' name. If you believe, say amen. amen. Let's worship for a while. He's going to help us. Let's sing the song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say that you're my God. All together, all together, worthy, all together, wonderful to me. Let's worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say.
Given your love Thank to us. You, Jesus. Who are we before Thank the Lord? The we magnify Thank your you holy love. name. Thank you, you are the worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You for everything. You are worthy. I give you the praise. Thank you, Father. Yes. Andres, come. Andres, come. We sing this song three minutes. In my spirit, I want us to sing this song. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Lift up your hands. Give, my, Take the mic of Mama. We sing for a few minutes. Oh, oh, Lord. Here I am too 